welcome to all of you in quantum mechanics series myself professor dr arvind sharma hod department of physics government lohia college chu today's lecture topic is variational principle or variational method application to the excited state of field it is according to syllabus of mgsu applications for helium atom and its excited states ground state helium atom is already discussed in last lecture by the variational approach where we see the hamiltonian relation where third term is due to the interaction energy of the electrons okay now in this lecture we are going to learn about the how variational principle or method is applied for excited state of the helium atom we know that helium atom have two electrons okay so in ground state helium atom in the hydrogen like states that is like one of the states so we can uh, show in short and notation electron configuration by one of the states but for excited state for helium atom the electron configuration is 1s to s okay for first excited state of helium atom what is the electron configuration electron configuration is like 1s to s and which may be represented by two diagrams you can easily understand these diagrams this is parallel spin and this is anti parallel spin you can easily understand this from here this is anti parallel and this is parallel okay and these are for symmetric and asymmetric symmetric and anti symmetric symmetric and anti symmetric coordinate wave functions okay so for first excited helium atom there are two wave functions one for symmetric and second for anti symmetric coordinate wave functions for symmetric phi s 1 to equal to 1 upon under root 2 Phi one s one phi two s two plus phi one s phi two or phi one s two phi two. Here we see the positive sign, and in the next expression, we easily can understand that there is a difference between these functions by this sign plus minus due to symmetric and asymmetric coordinate wave functions okay the total wave function of the system total wave function of the system that means we have two electron systems must be anti symmetric total wave function of the system is anti symmetric okay point to be noted that the total wave function of the this system is anti symmetric okay hence the coordinates wave function phi s coordinate wave function phi s corresponds to the anti parallel state phi s corresponds to the anti parallel state okay where total spin is zero and the wave function phi a corresponds to total spin one this state okay parallel and spin is one 
the anti parallel springs are called para strings anti parallel springs are called para strings while the parallel states are known as ortho strings again this point to be noted that anti parallel springs are called para strings anti parallel springs are called para strings and parallel spin states are known as ortho strings so there are two states para strings and ortho strings thus the states corresponding to coordinate function phi s are para strings while the states which are belongs to or corresponds to the uh, function phi a are ortho strings in zeroth approximation in zeroth approximation the para and ortho states zeroth uh, for the zeroth approximation the para and the ortho states configuration is 1s 2s have the same energy okay again point to be noted that for the zeroth approximation para and ortho states phi s and phi a of the configuration 1s and 2s have the same energy okay the electrostatic interaction v12 what is electrostatic interaction electron interaction term e square upon r12 e square upon magnitude of r1 minus r2 or e square upon r12 that is interaction term of uh, due to electron interaction and this creates the differences in the energies of these states initially these are same energies because uh, there is no electrostatic interaction term but uh, due to electrostatic interaction term the differences creates between these states of energies okay and energy of the para state phi s is higher than the ortho state phi energy of the para state phi s is higher than the ortho state phi in order to demonstrate it let us start suppose that energy change is given by delta e and mathematically this expression is given by that means energy change due to the interaction is given by delta e equal to i alpha beta plus minus k alpha beta. where alpha and beta alpha stands for 1s beta for stands for 2s and i alpha beta and k alpha beta mathematical relations are given delta e equal to i alpha beta plus minus k alpha beta and alpha stands for 1s and beta for 2s alpha and beta both stand for 1s and 2s okay what is i alpha beta i alpha beta is given by the relation i alpha beta equal to bra by alpha bra phi alpha 1 phi beta 2 uh, modulus of v12 phi alpha 1 phi alpha 2 equal to double integral modulus of phi alpha 1 square e square upon r1 minus r2 uh, modulus phi beta 2 modulus square d r1 d r this is the ordinary or conventional notations we used before here k alpha beta equal to this integral for alpha not equal to beta 
otherwise it is 0 if alpha equal to beta k alpha beta is given by this equation if alpha not equal to beta and it is given by 0 if alpha equal to beta ok in equation 8.58 there are two signs plus and minus ok upper sign is for para state and lower sign is for ortho state here plus for para state and minus for ortho state if alpha not equal to beta k alpha beta is always positive if alpha is not equal to beta then k alpha beta is always positive and para state is singlet straight is always higher in energy than the triplet strict. Going to be noted that for alpha not equal to beta, k alpha beta is always positive and para state, such kind of uh, state is known as para state and this is a singlet state, singlet spin state and its energy is always higher than ortho state which is have triplet strict. Y singlet and triplet. In the next uh, few paragraphs, you easily understand it. Okay. Now, suppose we function phi vanishes. Suppose phi a vanishes. Then what happens? Function phi s has its largest value when the coordinates of the two electrons are the same. If phi a vanishes, phi s becomes largest when the coordinates of the two electrons are the same. If the coordinates are same, in that case, this is a specific case. Thus, the electrons are more often far off from each other in the phi a state than in phi s state. If we considering such kind of a state, in that kind of a state, electrons are more often far off from each other in the phi a state uh, compared to the phi s state. In other words, every is energy. Every is energy corresponding to the Coulomb repulsion of the electrons is lesser in phi average energy which is corresponding to coulomb repulsion of the electrons is be low or lesser than lesser than phi straight in the contribution occurs what is the reason behind this the reason is that there is correlation in the motion of the electrons. There is correlation in the motion of the electrons and why this is? This is because the, of the consequence of the symmetry. This is because of the consequence of the symmetry of the wave function under a permutation of the spatial coordinates. This point is very important. You should understand it can okay now keeping in mind phi 1s and phi 2s are hydrogen like functions energy is even as e2s okay hamiltonian we know the expression for hamiltonian for helium atom if we take all these relations we can easily write down the expression for energies for para state and ortho state as well. E s equal to bra phi s h k phi s equal to double integral phi s h 0 plus v 1 2 phi s dr 1 dr 2 and this expression is given by E 1 s plus E 2 s plus q plus a here is plus sign for E s. Similarly, for Ea, 
only difference is from here plus and minus of q. What is q? q is known as Coulomb integral. And what is a? a is known as integral integral, exchange integral. q is Coulomb integral and a is exchange integral. Q is given by the expression given here. Okay. And the expression for exchange integral is given by this expression. This is equal to K alpha beta. Okay, so integral q is known as a Coulomb integral, and what is gives? It gives the average energy of the average energy due to Coulomb interaction. What it gives? Integral q is Coulomb integral, and it gives average energy. And the reason behind average energy is Coulomb interaction, and we are neglecting the correlation between the motion of electron okay and exchange integral a determines the coulomb interaction and this is from the result of the correlation in the motion of the two electrons due to the appropriate symmetry of the coordinate functions with respect to the permutation of special coordinates okay and here, the condition not with respect to the permutation of the particles themselves. Permutation of the spatial coordinates is going to be noted here. So, this key idea is very important. So, you go through very sincerely for this pattern. The integral Q and A may be calculated by using the hydrogen like wave functions we know that the phi 1 s equal to 1 upon under root pi z upon a raised to 3 by 2 e raised to minus z r upon a and phi 2 s equal to 1 upon 4 under root 2 pi z upon a raised to 3 by 2 2 minus z r upon a e raised to z r e raised to minus z r upon plus these are the two wave functions you should remember for this article. Now, the results comes Q equal to 11.42 electron volt and A equal to 1.2. The excited states of helium atom corresponding to 1s2p configuration. Now, we are taking the other configuration point to be noted. Here configuration is 1s 2p configuration. Okay, for uh, such kind of configuration, following are the parent ortho states. Phi s dash and phi a dash are. This is parent state and this is ortho state. This is plus. Here we are taking plus a. Here we are taking minus. So the result for here q equal to 13.22 electron volt and A is 0.94. The complete wave functions of both and para states corresponding to 1s, 2s configurations are multiplied by phi s with the singlet spin wave function phi 0, 0, s, 1, s, 2. Okay. For complete wave function, ortho state and para states corresponding to 1s and 2s, how we can uh, obtain it? We can obtain it by multiplying phi s with the singlet spin spin. Multiplying phi s with the singlet spin wave function, phi 0, 0. And for phi a with the triplet wave function. Okay. So, psi 1 para equal to phi s 1 to phi 0 0 s 1 
So you can easily understand from here, we replaces these wave functions here, and we are uh, easily understand. You can easily understand that what is the difference between para and ortho states. Thus, <clears throat> what we see here that there are three ortho states differing in the orientation of the total spin s for triplet states total spin s equal to 1 and there are three ortho states and for para state energy levels are singlet state singlet levels okay and the ortho state energy levels are triplet Now you can see that shift in the energy of the ideal atomic levels in helium when the electron interaction is taken. Otherwise, both are same. If we consider the electron interaction, then there is shift. Otherwise, there is no shift in the atomic levels of the helium. And this is according to the Holmes rule. And what is Wundt's rule? According to which a given electron configuration state, a given electron configuration state with the largest total spin has the lowest energy. If the spin is largest, largest total spin, then the lower energy is lowest. And this is shown here in the curve. Here is this is straight and here is the same states. There is no splitting. Here we can easily see that there is a split. Okay. And here we are seeing that triplet state is lower than singlet state. So this can also be shown in terms of Pauli explosion principle. Okay, the slater determinant. The slater determinant makes up an S equal to zero singlet state. As the electrons with opposite spin orientation with the symmetrical spatial path in which repulsive correlation is absent. For slater determinant, S equal to zero is a singlet state has the electrons with opposite spin orientation. Okay. With the spatial symmetrical part, and we know that repulsive correlation is absent. Repulsive correlation is absent. The particles can near each other and the positive interaction energy can be large. On the other hand, S equal to 1. Slater determinant with parallel spin orientation. And hence, spatial part is anti-symmetric. Keeps the electrons apart, reducing the positive energy. Keeps the electrons apart. And this reduces the positive energy. As the triplet state resides below the singlet state. Triplet state resides below the singlet state as equal to C. Okay. Which can be easily observed from here. Now, according to singlet state and triplet states, Helium atoms have two kinds of atoms. If it has singlet state, it is known as para helium. And if 
it it have it have triplet strip then it is known as ortho union singlet then it is called para triplet then it is known as ortho helium para helium have no magnetic moment and known and form a di magnetic pairs para helium atoms there is no magnetic moment hence it forms the di magnetic pairs on the other hand spectral lines of para helium on the other hand ortho helium atoms have magnetic moment and it forms the para magnetic gas again point to be noted that para helium have no magnetic moment and form di magnetic gas and ortho helium atom have magnetic moment hence from the para magnetic gas spectral lines the spectral lines for para helium atoms are singlet and hence the those uh, ortho helium consists of three clause levels triplets corresponding to three spin states okay spectral lines of para helium atoms are singlet and those of ortho helium consists of three clause levels triplets corresponding to three spin states with slightly different energies the relativistic corrections are taken onwards if spin orbit interaction and magnetic interaction between spins of two electrons also splits the levels in the triplet in other articles where spin orbit interaction and magnetic interactions between the spins of two electrons considered then they also split the levels of triplet states similarly if nucleus has spin and magnetic moment then there is further splitting in the energy levels and these are known as hyperfine splitting depending on the total angular momentum of the whole atom so we completed the topic variational method and its application to helium and its excited states according to mgsu university syllabus but in the new uh, in the next uh, few lectures we also try to understand it by some general lectures or some different types of approaches so we can easily understand okay thanks to all of you